Justin, thank you so much for coming on the AIM podcast. It's great to be here. Well, actually, thank <laughs> you for bringing the AIM podcast to Miami. Yes, that's a good way to put it. I appreciate you being kind enough to allow us to record this in the, the Own It HQ the office. The Own It HQ office, yes. it was. Uh, we, got, we got after it in Own It HQ outdoors this morning, yeah. <laughs> and now we're filming in Own It HQ office. So. Man, I'm so grateful to be here. Dude, it's been a fun week. This has been a hectic week. We started off with your event, Redeemed. I'd love for you even to share a little bit about Redeemed before we even dive into your story and what you're doing on it. Yeah, I mean, it's... What a crazy week, like heaven, you've been down here all week. We started with Redeemed, which really is the health, uh, wellness and performance event for men who want to deepen, strengthen and activate their faith. So dope. And uh, really bringing um, that relationship aspect um, with God and redeeming the identity of men uh, in that through health, wellness and performance or health and fitness. and. Uh, and it's just been amazing to see the um, the transformations that have happened in men. And so um, we started there and then we've been able to hang out all week, which has been awesome. And uh, we'll we'll cap it off with with a marathon tomorrow. Let's go, bro. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm super grateful to have been a part of this uh, redeemed event. And to be honest with you, just to give you a little bit of praise before I dive in, man, for anyone listening, like our the reason I'm sitting here in this chair is, is all God. Like our relationship was. I think pretty divinely appointed. It's it's kind of cool to see the way that God moves and puts different people in your life at different times. And I was in a season a few months ago where I was praying pretty boldly for God to put men in my life to help sharpen me, to pour into me, to just be good examples of people that are driven and ambitious, but they're doing it on a foundation of faith. They're not doing it to glorify themselves, but to advance the kingdom. And bro, you've been a huge answer to prayer amongst a couple other men, not many. I You have to be very cautious who you bring into your life, but I'm just I'm grateful for you, bro. And uh Excited to keep building this relationship and see all the cool things you're doing. Oh, thank you. It's been, uh, to be honest with you, it, it hasn't always been that way, which is why I think I, um, because I've walked those waters where relationships were transactional, where yeah. you did things that were um, based upon you advancing, you getting better, you getting notoriety, you getting the fame, you getting the financial uh, advancement. And uh, and it was just, you just left very empty. And um I think for me, um, uh, what I've just had a deep passion for was taking the relationships that so often are seen on social media where everyone's commenting on everybody's things right. be, to be able to try to say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm associated with this person or just tagging people just because and going from this transactional social media, fake, artificial posturing relationship to something that's real, something that's tangible, something that's... Um, uh, not just in person, but something that is that is truly reflective of the relationship that we have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when we're able to be whole there, we can be whole here. And uh, and and that's really just been been the mission. So thank you. That's good, bro. I love that. You have an incredible company. Own it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it. I want my audience, my community, to understand what you do and how you're actually changing people's lives, and yeah. not just from a not just from a fitness standpoint. I mean, this is a holistic approach, which I know you'll get into. But before you even dive into own it and this idea of taking ownership of your life, I want to I want everyone to understand a little bit about your background. Some just to kind of set the stage, give some context about what got you on this path, why you're so passionate. You're a very passionate person. And I want people to understand kind of why. So I, I, to be honest with you, it's it's that is God just through me. Yeah. Um, it's, there, there's no better, you can't fake it. You can't develop it. You can't learn it. It is simply that has just innately been put in your life. And, um, when I was, uh, grew up in a home that had a viciously praying mother, like, um, it was, it was amazing. It was a house full of love. Um, I, I knew God from a very young age and, uh, I, I heard him distinctly say at 11 that uh, I would redeem the health of the world. Wow. And um, I just didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be cool. <laughs> um, very shortly thereafter, it was kind of solidified in a couple different no like notions from my dad. And my dad didn't know anything about that at that point. And uh, I, was a, I was a hockey player, grew up in Canada, um, was playing with 14, 15 year olds as a 12 year old. And um, I had a tough week of games, wasn't playing well. 
And my dad said to me, he put his hand on my lap and he said, son, talent will get you noticed, mm. but consistency will get you paid. Mm, that's good. And for the moment, like at that moment, I knew that like, wow, this consistent thing that you're talking about, this consistent version of you, like, that's what I'm after. That's what I want to do. How do I become the most consistent version of myself? And I just became obsessed with the human body. I came obsessed with habits. I came obsessed with the things that I could control in my life, which was how I slept, how I ate, how I trained, how I recovered, how I managed stress, all of these things that were within my control based off decisions, based on habits, based on lifestyle choices. And so at 13, 14 years old, I was wearing heart rate monitors to sleep. I was looking at pulse oximetry. I was looking at HRV. I was looking at brainwave status. I was looking at, um, my blood work for my doctors and really diving deep into uh, the understanding of the concepts behind it, the uh, pathology of which things were actually happening internally. When everyone else was reading comic books, I was reading medical journals. It was, <laughs> I was, I was the weird kid. Like I yeah. was, I was different. And, um, and to be honest, I was ostracized a lot for it. Like right. I was made fun of, like yeah. I was, I was teased. And, um, but at the end of the day, I was like, it, it, it just made sense to me. Um, I came down to the States on a hockey scholarship, um, got two undergraduate degrees in exercise science and nutrition, uh, went and got my master's degree in exercise physiology um, with a concentration in sports performance. I then went and got my massage therapy license. Uh, I then went on and did my postgraduate research in heart rate variability and sleep. Um, that basically followed by a 12-year career uh, in the NCAA in the National Hockey League as a health and performance director. And uh, in 2020, um, I, again, I heard distinctly just this rumble um, of God saying, like, when are you going to stop serving the audience you want to wow. and serve the audience that I called you to? Mm. And it was that moment that uh, that I left. Um, and it was a uh, don't think that I left and boom, amazing <laughs> business was flourishing. Uh, it was about a year of frustration, irritation, um, turmoil, um, all over COVID when, uh, um, when I was trying to figure out what this thing was. And, um, and then, uh, and then in late 2021, own it was birthed and it's been, it, it's just been a, a God story ever since. Wow, bro. That's, an, that's a very encouraging story, man. And it's cool to see how I think there, I think people sometimes like, people can relate to your story in a lot of ways, but I think one way is like you feel called to do something. It's a little off the normal path. Yeah. You start to pursue it and you're looked at in a weird lens, but you know, you have this peace. You had this peace from God this time, all this whole time, even though you were still kind of figuring out what it meant, like what you, where you're going. I would love to understand, like, how did you see some of that apply to different areas of your life? You're growing up, you're like kind of just interested in, in habits and disciplines and, you know, taking care of your body. Like how did that play out in other areas of your life? So I think number one is like, I've always been different. I've always been, I've always beat my own drum. Yeah. Um, and for a long time, I saw that as a bad thing. I saw that be because again, I was left out of a lot of things. I wasn't in with the cool crowd. Um, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't seen. And for a long part of my life, all I wanted to do was fit in. All I wanted to do was blend in. All I wanted to do was be included. All I wanted to do is be chosen. And I mean, just saying that gives me goosebumps because wow. um, in hockey and in sport, even where I was playing, like, this, this, like think about this concept of being chosen, of being said, hey, like, this is, this is it. You got cut from hockey teams. You got traded from hockey teams. You got told you weren't good enough. You got told you were too small. You um, weren't brought into the cool crowd because you were wearing heart rate monitors to sleep. Yeah. You... Um, we're going through, um, anorexia and depression and, uh, you had too much baggage. So people didn't want to hang out with you. All of these things were going on through my life. And all I wanted to do is be chosen. And it wasn't about until about four years ago that something just clicked in my head is like, man, you've already been chosen. Like mm. you've already been chosen and you've been chosen for something that's bigger than anything that you're praying for. Wow. But what you're praying for, you just are yet to be prepared for. And you have to actually lean into what it is that you're preparing yourself for. And the only way you can prepare yourself is a life that's given and surrendered over to what it is that you're called for. And that is shown through obedience in your habits, your behaviors, and your lifestyle choices. Wow. That's so good, bro. I'm, I'm grateful you shared that because I know someone listening to this episode probably sitting there thinking, you know what? I, I can kind of relate to that. Like, I feel like I maybe don't fit in or I feel like 
a little ostracized. But the truth is, it's really beautiful how God can take that season of your life and develop you. And you don't know what's happening at the time, but now look at you where you are now. And it's all glory to God. And I know you would say that, but now you are you have a, a platform and an ability to make an impact on other people because of the path that you chose, because of the life that you lived. If you lived a normal life, fit in, had a great hockey career, you wouldn't be here right now making this massive impact impact for the kingdom. So glory to God for that. That's so it's it's funny the way you say it because um, even coming back to what I said, like my my prayer was that I would play in the National Hockey League yeah. and that I would be a player and have a career and have the fame and have um, mm. these things that would make me whole or make me feel like a part of that. Um, and so when I say you're called for something greater than you are praying for, that's that's true. Like you are you are built the what whatever you're praying for right now is so minuscule compared to what the big picture is compared to what has already prepared for you. Yeah, that's good. But the crazy part about that was, is that what I was even praying for, I hadn't prepared myself to handle. I hadn't Mm -hmm. prepared myself to handle the load, to handle the stress, to handle the fame. Like we always think about how are we going to handle failure? How are we going to handle failure? How are we going to handle things when things don't go our way? But have you ever thought about how you're going to handle success? Wow. Have you ever thought about how you're going to handle the win? Have you ever thought about how you're going to handle the money? Have you ever thought about how you're going to handle the fame? Have you ever wondered how you're going to handle the opportunity to be on all the stages all over the world? And if you haven't prepared a system, if you haven't prepared yourself to be able to make yourself operate through this way, it's going to crush you. Mm. And God's just not willing to crush his children. He's not willing to put this thing over you that you can't yet handle. He's going to stretch you, but he's not going to crush you. And we often fail to make habit and behavior choices or changes that are going to give us the capacity to handle what it is that he's ultimately called us for. Dude, I I love that, bro. And I think that's not talked about enough. And it's funny, though, I say that and it's been coming up a lot recently. Rich preached on that last weekend at VU. I at least touched on that. Eric Thomas, I was just at an event. Eric Thomas was talking about that. It's like, we always have these big dreams, aspirations, but are you competent? Like, are you truly ready? Yeah. You have this thing you want to do, but are you ready to step on that stage? Are you ready to have that big hit? And like, the truth is, I don't know. Are you? And I think it's cool to just process that because we have this vision in our mind of what we want, but are we ready for what we want? So I've got a good analogy on this. So do you know the slogan for Domino's Pizza? Uh I probably not off the top of my head. Hot and ready. Hot and ready. Okay. Hot and ready. Yeah. Maybe it's Little Caesars. Okay. It's, 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 one, of one, it's one of the pizza joints. Okay. <laughs> Needing more pizza. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> it, I just see it on the door and it like it's another epiphany, right? So as you're, all of us are passionate. You, t- you talked about how my passion was yeah. there, right? Yes. And I've been in these seasons. I've been in these seasons of mass. Like when I left the NHL, I was passionate. I was like, I, I'm going to change the world. I know this. It's been called over me. I've heard it. I know what I want to implement. I know the impact I want to make. But I wasn't yet ready for what I wanted to do. I was hot. Yeah. But I wasn't ready. Wow. I was hot. I was passionate. But I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And the difference between being hot and ready or the difference between being hot and passionate and being ready is time. It's time. You have to stay in the oven. You have to stay in the oven and cook just a little bit longer. You have to stay in the oven and take the heat just a little bit longer. You have to stay in the oven and be patient just a little bit longer. You have to stay in the oven and wait just a little bit longer because guess what? That sweet, great, delicious pepperoni pizza that's coming out with pineapple, with pineapple, it doesn't taste good. Yeah, it's good. If it's taken out too soon, it's doughy. The cheese hasn't melted. It's cold in the middle. It's not what you thought it was going to be. It's not what you were meant for it to be. Mm. It has to be ready. You have to be ready. And so you have to allow yourself to mature. You have to allow yourself to do the things, to have the habits, to have the behaviors, to have the lifestyle changes. You can't go and expect to be speaking all around the world if you can't go to bed on time when you, when you stay in your own time zone. Mm. If you can't have a steady sleep and wake time when you're in the Eastern time zone, when you're just traveling back and forth between small cities doing small speaking engagements, you can't expect to get opportunities to go speak in Japan and Australia and in Europe and on the West, West Coast when now you have to learn how to change time zones because that will kill you. And God's just not willing to do that to you. You can't all of a sudden go and expect to have a business when you're speaking 
to thousands of people if you yourself aren't living in alignment with what your message is. If your habits and behaviors are not in alignment with what it is that your body needs, with what your mind needs, with what you're supposed to be doing, then there's no way you're going to lean into actually what your full potential is. And there's going to be this gap that's called what I call the potential gap, which is what reality is for you today versus what you actually know is available. And all that lives here is frustration. But if you were to flip it around, what it lives here is actually opportunity. Dang, that's so good. I love how you kind of set this up perfectly because I want to now that you've kind of set this foundation, I want to help our community live up to their potential, walk in ownership. So can you talk to us a little bit about what it means to truly have take ownership over your life and how that's even applied to what you guys do at, at Own It? Yeah, so I think um, when we sit back, there's this dichotomy, and I talk about this in my new book, The Power of Ownership, um, is we there, there's this concept of a life by design and a life by default mm. and a life by design is different remember i talked about this concept of being different um we're all different every single one of us we're all called for different things we all have different circumstances we all have certain uh different experiences we all have different beliefs that bring us to this concept of a life of default to fit in requires you to live a life by default to be normal requires you to live a life by default. And when we decide to, to live a life by design, we choose to be different. We choose to be proactive. We choose to live by conviction. We, lose, we choose to live um, by uh, commitments, not by circumstance, not by feelings, not by random acts. And so we have to first off say, no, I want to be different. I want to live a life that's different than what the norm is. I want to live a life that is unique. And when you make that choice, when you make that declaration, it's now like, okay, what's next? Right. And that's where I've taken and what we've done with Own It is we've truly democratized high performance. We've democratized um, a life by design. We've democratized uh, the same philosophies, the same systems, the same principles that were once only available to pro athletes and the elite wealthy to now make them available to everybody when it comes to understanding your body from sleep quality and heart rate variability, understanding how your body's handling stress because our body doesn't know the difference, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional stress. You could be running a marathon like we're going to be doing tomorrow. You could be in a fight with your spouse. You could be in a fight with your kids. You could be um, struggling with a major decision uh, at work. You could be um, trying to figure out what, what direction you're going to take your business. All of these things, your body doesn't know the difference between these stressors, and they're all having an impact on how your body actually handles stress. Well, that chronic stress that we're under ultimately starts to build up and it creates chronic inflammation. That's the body's response to mm -hmm. chronic stress. Chronic stress creates chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation creates chronic symptoms, symptoms like brain fog, symptoms like overwhelm, symptoms like uh, inability to sleep, symptoms like low energy but we've normalized these symptoms. We've normalized these symptoms and said, oh, that's what it takes to be an entrepreneur. That's what it takes to be a business owner. That's what it takes to be a mom. That's what it takes to be a dad. That's what it takes to build a, um, uh, a platform. But it's actually a lie. And it's a lie that keeps us from realizing the potential that exists because chronic stress equals chronic uh, inflammation, which creates chronic symptoms, which at the end of the day cause chronic disease. And chronic illness, chronic disease is the leading cause of death in the United States at 71%. 71% wow. of deaths in the United States are chronic illness. Heart attack, stroke, diabetes, COPD, all of these things are caused by habits, behaviors, and lifestyle. 71%. 71% of all deaths in America are chronic illness. And 93% of those are preventable. Preventable through lifestyle, habit, and behavior change. And so... This concept that I talk about, this fake health continuum, where you're in this, this is really important, you're in this disease free, you go to your doctor, you get blood work, oh no, you're fine, you don't have any disease, but no, I don't feel well, like I've got mm. symptoms. So you're disease free, but symptom full. It's what I call fake health. And this is this space that we live because wow. the world has told us it's normal. It's really good. And so the longer we live here, 
what ends up happening is our window starts to close to actually be proactive and preventable to when our window shuts and it thrusts us into a disease space where now something's broken. Now we have to actually fix it. Now we get put into the system where you get on high blood pressure medication, you get on some type of um, uh, high cholesterol medication, you get on, uh, you become the type two diabetic. You have to now handle something different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus when you take action in this window and take a stand and put a line in the sand, say, I'm not available for this. I know I can feel better, but I know I can change my habits. I know I can change my lifestyle. I know I want more agency over this thing I'm living in. I have to start understanding this based on what, how I'm living that now puts us into what I call true health, which is where there's more than enough energy, more than enough time, more than enough resources to make sure that we feel good and have everything that we truly are desiring and we live a life by design. We live a life that's different. I live a life that's different than you live yes. and different than anybody else lives because as a single man, it's very different than a um, married man with a dog and a business and a home. Like very different. Like I just have different priorities. I'm in a different season of life. It's not good or bad. Yeah. We can both still be extremely healthy in our own different ways, but life looks different for me than it does for you. Right. It's, it's going to look different for me than it's going to look for you. Then it's going to look for somebody who it has, who's married with five kids. It's going to look very different from somebody who, from me to you, to this married person, to uh, a divorced mom of three, who's a nine to five job. Like all of these people need different lifestyle habit and behavior choices. You just can't put a blanket brush stroke across and say, this is the habit that's going to make you healthy. That's going to go with you. We need to figure out how to personalize it, figure out what you need. And make sure that you have agency and understand that so that we can ultimately start tailoring it based on the season that you're in. Wow, dude, that's that's good. I like how you break that down because I think a lot of people a lot of people think, okay, I'm I'm good right now. I don't have this disease, but as soon as it hits, then like, oh, what do I do now? Like yeah. and, and I love how you're being proactive. You're you're trying to educate people and help them understand, look, there are things, no matter where you are in your journey, no matter what you look like, you can be doing something right now to be a good steward of your body, to take care of your health, to prevent potentially things happening. Talk about the different kind of categories of like holistic health, the things that you guys kind of hit on, because I think it's so much more and it's deeper than what people maybe think on the surface level. Sure. Of like what is health? Yep. So this comes from all of the, the research that, um, that I went through in a lot of my doctoral work. And then obviously with experiential within the league and, and with the best players in, uh, in the world. And so when I first stepped into the NHL, um, everybody trained the same, everybody ate the same, everybody supplemented the same, everybody traveled the same, um, everybody had the same um, recovery modalities. But yet all the owners and the coaches and the managers are wondering why everybody had a pretty similar injury rate, everybody had a pretty similar sickness rate, everybody would get tired during the season around the same time. And you, it was really just about who had the best talent or who could withstand the grind of the season, the best that would ultimately have the players available that they needed. And I was like, what if there was a way to actually figure out how to maximize this for each player and each individual? Sure. And so that's when we started to use data. That's when we started to use heart rate variability. And we started to look and really pull different level levers or have different handles that people could have agency over on specific things that they could focus on that would elevate their ability to withstand pressure, withstand stress, withstand strain, build capacity so that they could, again, start performing better because you can't shut off the faucets of stress. You can't shut off the work that you have. You can't shut off being with your family. You can't shut off the, uh, the decisions you have to make. They're there. They're present. What we have to do is we have to figure out how to poke holes in our cup mm -hmm. to allow it to drain so that we can take on more, do more, and have capacity that we're called to. And so there's really eight levers, eight different levers that we can pull on that impact heart rate variability. Remember, heart rate variability is really a language that's communicating how your body is handling stress and strain. Your body doesn't know the difference, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. And when we did this in the league, what we started to notice was we were the least injured team in the league. We were the least sick team in the league. We had constant energy and we didn't see those dips and valleys throughout the season as often. And we ultimately started to perform better. We had better outcomes. And it didn't have anything to do with more talent or that we were doing better drills on the ice or that um, we wanted to win more than we did before. It's just that we were more consistent with everything that we did because consistency compounds. And so the eight levers that we really lean into are training and movement, nutrition, 
hydration, sleep, immune response, environment, self-care, and mindset. And these eight areas give us this different capacity and there's different habits under each one, right? So under self-care, let's make sure that we have 30 minutes of self-care just a day or uh, 30, 30 minutes of self-care just for you every single day. So it's something just for you, something that you don't do for somebody else. It's not walking your dog. It might be playing video games for you. It might be sitting in a sauna for you. It might be going for a walk for you. It might be listening to a podcast for you. It might be just laying on your couch and just closing your eyes. It might be like something very simple. Whereas mindset is something that you're actually doing to physically build something, build a mindset. So it could be breath work. It could be meditation. It could be journaling. It could be reading the Bible. It could be uh, coaching calls. It could be seeing a therapist. It could be doing EMDR. It could be uh, whatever this looks like for you. Go to uh, nutrition. Sit very simple. Three meals a day. Stopping eating three hours before you go to bed, starting eating three hours after you wake up, giving yourself a circadian eating um, uh, time window. It could be um, going for a five minute walk after you eat to regulate blood sugar. It could be looking at the order in which you eat, starting with proteins, going to fa uh, fats, going to veggies and finishing with carbohydrates. All of these things that are intentional based on how you're going forward. Because the way that I define performance, I've done this and asked probably close to 150,000 people by now wow. from my athletes to all the keynotes that I've done to the workshops I've done and all the rooms I've asked very high performing individuals, what's your definition of performance? And I keep getting the same exact answers. It's things like winning, attaining a goal, efficiency, results. Well, all of these things, the way that we see performance is all outcome driven. Mm. My def definition of performance is the desire and capacity to intentionally and consistently behave at a level equal to your mental, physical, spiritual, emotional potential. I'll break that down. Your desire and consistency. We all have the desire to have the platform. We all have the desire to have the influence. We all have the desire to have the business. We all have the desire to have the body. We all have the desire to have the impact, but you just don't have the capacity goes back to what I said before, what you're praying for, you're just not yet prepared for. Mm -hmm. So you have the desire, you just don't have the capacity. The reason you don't have the capacity is because you haven't developed intentional and consistent behaviors that maximize your potential. Right, right. And so if we can come back to what it is that we need to focus on in and amongst those eight levers, and we now have a driver like heart rate variability to start guiding us and say, hey, Doug, that actually isn't huge priority for you because it's not making a big jump or the behaviors that you're engaging in right now, the choices you're making are actually lowering your capacity to lean into what it is that's already called and already prepared for you. And so it's this wake up call, this moment that we go, man, I can lean into something different. I can now have agency over my choices. I can have agency over my behaviors. I have an accountability system that I can now lean into and actually see the, su the success that I've been desiring, but I've just been following the ways of the world thus far. Mm, dang, dude, that's so good, bro. I'm excited for more people to get to know more about you. Obviously, getting you on the show is great. I'm going to, guys, you're going to see me sharing a lot more stuff with Onan. I'm going to, I'm going to be putting some links in the show notes just for people to check it out. Cause I think that's a, that's a really solid understanding of what you guys do, but I know there's more and I'm sure people listening are probably interested. I do want to talk to you about an upcoming project you've been working hard on that's coming out. And that is your next book. First off, congrats on writing a book. That's not easy. And, Thank you. and people know listening, but talk a little bit about what the book is and, and kind of the purpose of it and what you're trying to accomplish with this. Yeah. So it, the, the book title is called the power of ownership. Uh, uh, redeem your health, live life by design, and break the relentless pursuit of normal. And through the, it's broken into really three parts. The the first part is really pinning uh, normal and different against each other, showing the dichotomy that exists between here. What we've to been told by the world to believe mm -hmm. is normal versus what is actually true, which is being different. And if we can grasp and wrap our head around what this looks like, it now gives us agency to do that. The second part um, is really helping us understand uh, heart rate variability and the eight foundational principles. Like, what does this look like? How do we actually put this into place? Uh, understanding what living different looks like. And then part three is uh, really how do we build new habits? How do we live different is what part three is called, live different. But how do we now start to build this into habits and build this into something that's sustainable? And so John Maxwell was 
so kind in his review and John Gordon and uh, Ben Greenfield and just really comparing it to the next level of atomic habits and, That's a great um, That's a big <laughs> and, and just saying just how, um, it's, it, it, it's powerful in what's in there. And so, um, I'm excited for people to read it. Um, you can go to the power of ownership book.com and, um, get full access, uh, to it early, um, which, uh, which that's now live. So it's been, uh, it's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I think I told you this story when I was writing this book. Um, I actually finished it. Um, I was done. I was ready to turn the manuscript in. And again, God just spoke to me and said, that's not the book I told you to write. And, uh, a complete retool, a complete revamp, uh, of the book in about 10 days. And, uh, 15, 16 hour days, just turning that thing into what it was supposed to be. And, um, I'm, I'm really excited for, for it to get into people's hands. Yeah, I'm excited for you, man. I'm excited for you. And anyone listening that wants to check it out, I'll drop the, the link in the show notes as well. But dude, this has been a really fun episode. I'm so glad we got to have you on. I definitely want to do another episode once the book actually goes live and we can really get into it. But man, it, it's so powerful and it's so encouraging to see someone like you live the way you do obviously not perfectly but you lead you lead well and you serve well and uh, i'm just thankful for you bro so this has been awesome thank you doug it's been great loved having you here and there's going to be more life to to come together that's right bro where can people find you i know you talked about the book but if people want to support you if they want to learn more about all the things you're doing where can people find you yeah it's very simple very active on instagram at justin roth um or ownitcoaching.com is a great place to find out more about us let's go Guys, this has been a good episode, Justin. Thank you for coming on the AIM podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see all the cool things that God's going to continue to do through you and through your business, man. Appreciate you, Doug. Let's go.